Hello gamers! I want to show you just how easy it is to start gaming digitally with Roll20. I've been using Roll20 since 2013. I've seen its ups, its downs, and I still think it's one of the best tools on the market for new and seasoned GMs alike. This is Adrestia, my friends call me Ad because I'm so damn positive. And today we're going to get good at Roll20. First things first is going to be account creation. So you as a GM and your players will need an account. A free account comes with 100 megabytes of storage, a compendium sharing one game and up to five players, and two active listings for LFG or looking for group. It's a great platform to run and play a one shot. Like maybe you want to try a new system or you just have an idea that you want to get out of your head. Um, it's also great for playing theater of the mind games that still require things like dice rolls, secret messages, or it could just be a great tool for when you and your players can be in the same place. Hmm, 2020 in a nutshell, right? The three gigs of data are going to be great for all of the maps, NPC images, and other media you're going to upload throughout your campaign. No one in the history of ever has liked ads, so it's also an instant plus because there's no ads with this tier. The shared table features means that everyone can see the cool things you've unlocked with your subscription, and we'll get into more of what those are. Dynamic lighting is by far one of my favorite features, and Roll20 over mm -hmm. the years has done a lot to improve this feature and make it feel good for any kind of game you're wanting to run. The Character Vault is also a really powerful feature for users who have pre-existing character builds. It means that you can port them around from game to game. It's also useful for porting around favorite NPCs or monsters. Also, you get the same compendium and LFG tools, but you just get more of them. Now let's talk about the Pro Tier. This is the tier for the truly dedicated nerds like me who love all the tools that Roll20 brings to bear and more. And no, I'm not getting sponsored or any kind of money from Roll20. I am simply sharing my thoughts and opinions. So you get more storage, more power in the compendium sharing, and highlighted listings for your limitless LFG ads. That's all great. But if you already use a plus tier, you're probably already used to these, so I can go on ahead. So let's talk about the custom character sheets. Are you running some kind of homebrew? Uh, do the stock character sheets just not cut it for you and you want to make some adjustments? Are you a developer who wants to see the world burn? <laughs> custom sheets are here for you. I don't mess with them, but I'm happy to use them when I stumble upon a cool sheet or a sheet that gets too bloated and affects web performance. And that can happen. The API access is really cool. It's like mod packs for your game. For example, let's say you want an easier way to roll initiative for a ton of monsters on the field. I frequently use an API call developed by another talented user to do this very job. And I can't tell you how many cool API tools exist out there to really help you make a custom game experience that everyone can enjoy. Now the dev server access is for all of you nerds out there that like to get early access to cool new features and give your input. I work in the software space and I uh, get enough dev server access in my day-to-day -day life that I don't want to put myself through the horrors of it when I'm gaming. So if it excites you, if it floats your boats, then set sail, my friends. Bon voyage. Once you've picked your subscription tier, it's time to create your first game. Like, like I said, I have the pro tier so you might see some things you won't have at a lower tier. Now. I'm going to assume that you're watching this series because you're a GM looking for something for a game you're planning to run. If you want to see some cool features from a player's perspective, leave me a comment below. I really love helping people improve their TTRPG experience no matter what side of the die you're on. So for you GMs, you're going to click create a new game at the top here and come to the new game screen. Name of the game is pretty easy. I'll just input ads magical noob venture and you can always change it later. Now tags are only needed if you're going to use the LFG feature and want potential players to be able to find your game in the sea of games out there. And they're gonna do that out in the Roll20 forums. You might want to include things like genre categories, if there's age restrictions, or even if you're running house rules just to give other players the idea of what kind of game you're looking to run. Next, you can choose a character sheet template. As you can see here, this list is pretty huge and it covers just about any system you can think of. 
instead of scrolling, just use the auto predict to type in the system that you're using. Once you select a sheet, you can see a preview of it below here. Now scroll back up to the top, create the game, and voila! Your game exists in the series of tubes. Your game is not ready for prime time yet. If you want to know just how to use Roll20, you could have gone anywhere, but you came here. So I'm going to show you how to play like Matt Mercer birthed you from his genius GM loins. Get your game ready for your players. Upload a picture that sets the mood for your campaign. When it comes to finding good picks, Pinterest and Google are your friends. I got this really cool picture from Reddit user Ragnar21583 after a Google search. Link in the description. If you do anything else, open up your game settings to the right of this panel. Your game starts out private. If you're a GM with a public following and you want viewers, patrons, or even just other friends to observe your content between public viewings or whatever, you're going to want to set this to public. The game background image is a woefully neglected feature, but I think of it kind of like a wallpaper for your game's homepage. For players to have access to a character vault, your plus and pro players that is, you can let them import one of their pre-made characters, which can make starting a new game from scratch much faster. Now, game default settings are going to look really daunting for now. Just let it be. We'll get into it later on in this series. Compendium system under compendium settings is really only going to matter if you're running a sheet different from the system you're playing. So let's say you're running a Pathfinder Adventure Path, but you're using D&D 5e rules. The list shows which players are using your compendium access. If you have more players than compendium sharing slots, I would recommend asking your players who actually needs access. Maybe they're new or who wants to be the rules lawyers for the table. And I guarantee there's always one. Finally, here's where you can come to change the character sheet being used. I don't recommend doing this in the middle of an ongoing game that can cause havoc with the data that's there, um, or it could cause players that need to take some time to re-enter their data. So if you and your players decide to run a game in a different system before you start, then here's your chance to change that and even customize some of the default settings. Again, more on that later on in the series. Once you've polished up your changes, you're ready to save and look at your updates. I like to put together a summary of the game here in the description. If you're running an adventure path or an AP, you can really rip that description from that um, pre-written description and put it there. Then I like to put together some links to resources in the description, like if you're using an Obsidian portal or a World Anvil, as well as links to your stream, game playlist, or Discord chat. If you know when the first game will be, then go ahead and update the date here. Now, there's one last thing that I like to create before inviting my players into the game. I always create a post called Game Rules. This is my introductory post in Session 1 space. Everyone can get a taste of the game here and also post any questions or concerns while we wait for the game to start up. I post a starting map of the area players should be familiar with, any common hooks they should have. I give them a resource library of links, what are the starting conditions for their character, and what are the base character creation conditions. What are some of the restrictions I might have for the game? And what are some restrictions that I might have personal? And with that, I want you to go out there and create the game you've been putting off. You don't have to invite any players yet. We'll be going over how to get ready for your session zero in the next episode. So what did I miss? Do you have any cool tips? Would you like to share anything else with the community? Let's start a conversation in the comment section and stay positive out there, nerds. Done! So excited. My mm. mouth is stupid. So stupid. You're ridiculous. <laughs> I'll fight you. Okay. Recording that? You record that? You save a copy so when the police find my dead body. <laughs> <laughs> the, the police won't find your body. Um.